Welcome again to uh, Ian Holloway. And we're all looking forward to those wonderful stories, Ian, that you've got. <laughs> what does the king have for Christmas dinner? Come on. I don't know. A turkey crown. Oh, that's awful, isn't it? <laughs> that's so bad. They got it so wrong, it's unbelievable. Since the last window. Chelsea. Chelsea. All day long. What are you doing? The last time I took my clothes off, they said, Christ, whatever he's got on needs ironing. That <laughs> Tell us what your Christmas Day dinner plate looks like. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill and a big double, a special thank you to you if you subscribe to our YouTube channel because in the last week we hit 20,000 subscribers on YouTube yes. and we are thrilled. So thank you so much if you subscribe. If you don't, what are you doing? Get get onto YouTube, get subscribing on us. We really appreciate it. And if you can you know, give us a little review, a little like, a little whatever is it wants on the platform that you're listening to us on Spotify, Spotify and Apple, wherever you're listening, that would be very much all we ask for Christmas this year. Um, and, well, the other thing I wanted for Christmas was Sam to come back off his holidays, and he has. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm uh, glad to be back, Nat. Um, I say that with tongue in cheek because the weather was so good where I was, obviously. So, uh, uh, coming back to the cold weather, but obviously getting back to the, the podcast is uh, something I look forward to every time. Uh, we're we're on air and on social media wherever the platform is. We put this out on, of course, and uh, and as as forever and and as long as we've done it, like looking forward to our guests, of course. Very much looking forward to our guests. Before we introduce our guests, can we just have a little word on your jumper? Yes. Um. So on the top of it, it says "I'm sexy and," and then on the bottom that we can't see, do you want to fill us in what it says? I know it. I snow it yeah. and it is a picture of a a snowman lifting weights I'm sexy and I snow it I love thought that. it was appropriate today our uh, last podcast <laughs> before Christmas you know saw it in the wardrobe there and thought that's gonna I think that'll go down well today like you mean so yeah yeah it's brilliant I yeah, much appreciate you. it yeah. and our guest as well has come looking rather dapper would you like to introduce the guest today well I mean the first thing is I gotta mention the hat I mean I don't know whether you'll put it on before we finish but it looks super cool, but uh, it's uh, it's our old friend. He's been been, been on before uh, last season. It's uh, welcome again to uh, Ian Holloway. Ian, thanks again for coming. Comes What's a long that? way from Dan, way down in Bristol. Set off really early this morning, so we really do appreciate it. It's a pleasure, folks. Great to see you. Looking so well, and uh, let's get chatting away. Thank you for coming. Yes, five-hour drive you've had, and you've come looking very dapper. For our podcast listeners, Ian is in a red waistcoat, a kind of burgundy, velvety jacket. So I get my hat. So I get my hat. Um, right, hold on. He's getting his hat. He's getting his hat. Hold on. Um, because if you are watching on YouTube, if you're not, this is your time to go and subscribe over on YouTube. Um, port, port, port they need hat. to Look see it. Okay. Yeah. Quality. Yeah. I bought it in Brighton, down in the lanes. There's, they've got an actual hat shop called the Mad Hatters. And I thought it suited me down to the ground. <laughs> you should pay a visit to Stockport while you're up north and get yourself in the Hat Museum. In the Hat Museum. The, the thing museum. is, there is a story behind it. I've got what could lead to skin cancer. So I'm having this treatment. You know, I've had five right, bits cut okay, off yeah. me. Yeah. So I've got to wear a hat, whatever the weather. Whatever the weather? Whatever the weather. Wow. Because I got it all over the place. So you should put sun cream on. I never did. I did wear sun cream. I wear fat to 50 every day on my face. Do you? Yes, every day. Even Is that the secret why you look so good? Thank you very much. Yes, that's how I'm staying so youthful. <laughs> I'm factor yes. 30, man. So. <laughs> I, just do, I just do that. <laughs> oh, well, we hope you, we wish you well. Yeah, no, it's fine. Luckily, touch wood. Um, they've said it, it's just sun damage, but I've had lots of bits cut off. We're worried about this little bit, but the fella, the surgeon actually thinks it's just two uh, ducks that are together that aren't... They, they Apparently, your skin doesn't like being moved on your face too close you're better off with a skin graft but i got plenty of other skin everywhere else if i if if it's so were you, were you were you a sunbather then I like vain try, lads like was i like to try and move it you know so what I mean? it looked like i'd been skinny dipping and <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? blended but in yeah i, I, I was you insane. did go skinny dipping at some point no not really <laughs> no i wouldn't want to share that with people <laughs> the last time i took my clothes off they said christ whatever he's got on needs ironing that <laughs> Well, thank you very much for, for coming again. Um, it's a Christmas kind of specially episode. And yeah. so um, Sam and I have done, uh, I've brought gifts. Um, Sam's uh, secret so, Santa. Yes. So Sam, do you want to give your gift for Ian first? 
Okay. Very well, yeah. There you go, Ian. Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas. Thank sir. you very much. Okay, you need to open Can it. Can I up. open it? Yes, please. You need oh, to open it tell, up. Don't tell my grandchildren. I said you will. Yeah, you do. You can't open it before Christmas Day. <laughs> Lovely, well wrapped as well. Appreciating that. Okay, and it is. Oh my goodness! Oh, it's a oh big man. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Big Sam. Thank you very much, mate. Pleasure, I mate. I should look forward Pleasure. to reading that. Big Sam, my autobiography. Uh, Beautiful. Very nice. And I'm doing another one now, you know. You beat me in the, in the playoffs. In there. Yeah. I knew all Have you signed it? No, we'll do it before it You better do that for me. Yeah, you need, um, you need a new edition, Sam, with a couple well, of yeah, chapters oh, on the end. It's been a long time, that one. I did that one after West Ham. It's 2015, like I mean, so... It's been a long, it's been a long career been since then. Yes. You know what I mean, a lot, to, a lot to, mind you, I've had a couple of offers for documentaries, but uh, whether that, you whether have. I actually do that will be another, another telling factor on whether whether the family will join in. So they want to know all about you, all about all your life, about all about it, your yeah, career. But, and I'm not so sure whether the family want to join in. They're very, they're very quite private, like you mean. They're not, especially my wife. She doesn't, she doesn't like talking. If you don't, if you don't mind me saying, big man, I, I think it. Uh, I watched the Beckhams the other week. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, I found it fascinating. I thought it was really good, really clever how they did it. Um, and yeah. I went and bought his aftershave after because I want to smell like <laughs> it. Like I didn't realise the the mental toughness he had, but it, I think it's fantastic if you share what has happened to Absolutely, you yeah. on and off the yeah, field. And it can't. Well, yeah, you've got you've got to have. Some editing rights, like you mean, because yeah. Well, the Beckhams got, clearly did. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would look personally. I would love it. Please talk your wife into it, and <laughs> she could do her own book, The Real Boss. Oh well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got that in one, by the way. You know, so without them, mind, we it, mind do you, it. you know, probably half a bottle of wine, and it would all come out. <laughs> Good and bad. <laughs> I really would like to see this documentary. This is, I'm really hoping it would this happens only give, next year. It would only year. give her the courage to actually start talking about it. Oh, I would love that. Oh, well, that that that's a wonderful little tidbit there. Um, I have you a present, Sam. Oh, thank Merry you Christmas. Thank, thank you. you very much. It's been a wonderful year with you on No Tippy yeah, Tappy. We've really enjoyed it, haven't we? Yeah. We're really grateful to William Mill, of course. We are. We very sponsor. much enjoy it. And Sam is currently opening. He can oh, see there yeah. is a Man City badge on it. <laughs> right behind my bar. <laughs> so a Manchester City it's pint pot, Sam, because I figure pot. you can put your, your bitter into it yeah. over Christmas and, and sit and watch all the games. The golf when I go. And some golf, Manchester City golf When the weather City gets golf better. Yeah. You can take when you go and play with tubes. Absolutely. Hey, I look forward to that, by the way. That'll be good, you yeah. You yeah. not let me down, Yeah. Tube, oh, we will not, no. Oh. Anyway, Nat, this is my oh, present for you. Oh, thank you so much. There you go. It's big presents, Sam. Big one, nice. Oh, my goodness, thank you. I feel, I feel like I'm going to guess, is it like a, is it a Bolton shirt with big no. on the back? No, I say. Oh, yeah. It's a <laughs> See? It is. He cares a, about you. A Manchester there we go. City Christmas jumper. Winter. The only thing I, I, I very much appreciate, Sam, and I'll put it straight on, um, I got a free one of these at the weekend, so oh. I'm sorry you wasted your money. Oh, I'm sorry. But <laughs> never mind. But thank you so Two. much. Yeah. Should I put it straight on? You should have not yeah. told him. That's I know, yeah, I'm a meanie, Tell aren't I? Thank you very much, Sam. I love it. It's a Chris City Christmas jumper that says Santa on it. Thank you very, very much. Very nice. Um, should we pull a cracker? We've got the crackers as well, because it wouldn't be Christmas, so... Oh, oh gosh, I've been beaten by Big Sam. Are, Unbelievable. I'm used to losing. Okay, Go ready, on. Ian? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've lost oh twice. no. No. Absolutely devastated. Lost oh, twice. That's for, that's for the kids. Oh no, it's a oh, it's a reindeer. Did yeah. you get a joke? I did I get a joke. Give us a joke. Oh, what does the king have for Christmas dinner? Oh, I don't know. What do you ask for Christmas thing, no, dinner, Sam? What does the king have for Christmas dinner? Come know. on. I don't know. A turkey crown. Oh, that's awful, isn't it? <laughs> that's so bad. I like them cringy <laughs> ones on Christmas Day. <laughs> my dad would like that one. i got to get me... I'm showing me age. i got my glasses now. got my glasses. I'm making up my reindeer while we're talking. How do reindeers celebrate Christmas? I don't know. How do reindeers celebrate Christmas? <laughs> it's quite good, this. <laughs> <laughs> I, know I shouldn't laugh. Really, okay. With a night on the tiles. <laughs> Up on the roof. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. wow, I really did oh, not get that. Presents, delivering presents, yes. <laughs> oh, wow, how slow was I there? I yeah. really, really didn't Night get that. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for 
a wonderful year. Uh, thank you for the jumper as well, Sam. Um, so a Christmas special wouldn't be <coughs> Christmas special without some Christmassy kind of questions. So um, what are your favourite things about Christmas? Ian, what's your favourite thing? It's weird. I love red, gold and green all together. So every time I see a tree or, you know, decorations, it makes me smile. So <coughs> this year, yeah. my wife and I put the decks up the last day, the last night of um, November. And so it was there for December the 1st. Our neighbours knocked on our door saying, what are you doing? You're putting us to shame. But I love it. I think it's brilliant. And then just to see your grandkids' face knowing that Santa's come oh. is so magical. It's unbelievable. It's even better than when it was our kids, you know, but wow. Well, I've just, I've just been that. to D Dubai, Ian, like I mean, and I have to tell you now, Christmas in Dubai and Christmas decorations over there <gasps> are just oh my God. unbelievable. The trees, the decorations. Was, and and the, 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 they're so hell-bent on giving everybody such a great time. I even, I even watched a pantomime way over there, Beauty and the Beast. Did in, you? in the oh, hotel, yeah. He's behind you, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Un un <laughs> honestly, it was so funny as well, like, I mean, and, and, it, and it, get, it got me in the mood for coming back and celebrating Christmas, and obviously our Christmas is, is obviously going out going out for Christmas dinner. The family goes, booked Christmas dinner in the local restaurant. Nice. You know, we get, we get typical, we get two and a half hours, and then the next, <laughs> the next lot have to come in, like, I mean, so we, we're set, and then be back to my daughters who, who took over Christmas quite a while ago to, you know, from, yeah. from we did it for so many years. I obviously went to bed about, used to go to bed about 10 o'clock and leave everybody downstairs drunk, like, you mean, playing yeah. charades or whatever it is, because obviously we would be playing the day after, you know what I mean? But uh, got a bit better as a manager. Yeah. Used to be, you know, two paracetamol before I set off <laughs> Boxing Day if we're playing at home. But yes, yeah, Tell really love that. it. Tell us about the fact that it's Christmas Day, but you've got a game Boxing Day. Was there things, did you have to have a word with certain players? Was there like rules that were set about what couldn't, couldn't be done on Christmas Day? Were, they, were your players allowed a massive pile of food? You, you, tr you know the ones that would be diligent. A problem. And you know the ones you had to watch, but... I tried everything over the years to give them the day off, to make them come in, to work them hard. Um, and do you know what? It, it's all about the group at the end of the day. And my Blackpool lot were probably the best because I could trust them. Yeah. And they would... There's always things that tempt you. For me, mince pies are a joke. I, I And I just love mince pies. I go to Costa. i got to have one, you know, me and my <laughs> wife. We, so we're factoring that in now. But when you play, we were lucky. I could eat anything I wanted and it... I could run it off. So, yes. you know, but I think it's important you let them experience it properly with their family as long as you can, and then they'll play for you. That's how I found it, you know, if you can understand. But if you don't trust your team, you're in trouble anyway as a manager. I used to talk to them about that, like, I mean, because there was nothing, there was nothing worse for me with my young family than getting up Christmas morning and having to go training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's really a lack of, it used to be, and I could understand it because, as Ian said, they used to be the ones that would, you know, wouldn't wouldn't take notice of it, like you mean. But you, we, in general, I always found footballers hugely dedicated. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. the, the, you know, there were always the odd one that got caught out, and uh, nearly the, the, they tied everybody with the same brush, but it was never the case, like I mean. So I always, always give them Christmas Day off, and trusted them. Wow. And said, I trust you. But I don't, no, don't let me down. So, because now when you start, you see, it would soon stand out somebody who's abused themselves on Christmas or over Christmas. Like, because Boxing Day, it would, it would temper their performance and we would see that. But Ian's done a great job as well as We've you. We've got two rangers there. Yeah. Nice to you. Just need a red Thank nose you. on them now, don't we? We do, yeah. yeah. Love it. So, yeah, I always, give them, I always give them Christmas Day off and then, uh, and it, it, uh, Christmas make or break. So we we yeah. lost six stay in the job, stay in the job or get sacked. We lost six. That's nil coming now. It's Boxing, coming this Christmas. Boxing Day at Norwich, yeah. absolutely embarrassing. And I went, you've let me down for the rest of my life. I can't, you know. I let I let them not come in. So but it, it, it's about creating something, uh, an environment, and creating trust and, right. and building relationships. And mm. and you know, I'm looking at football these days and. Coaches, managers, whatever you want to call them, you you need to trust them and you need to let them have some time. And uh, I'm I 
I'm very limited, really, if I don't want to drive around because Bristol City or Bristol Rovers, that's the only choice yeah, I've got. Yeah, it's a long way to go anywhere else, really. Got, yeah. Yeah, you've got so many yeah. different choices. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, as a kid growing up, that, that was the only choice I had. So I had to move out of my wonderful, huge city that I live in to f chase my own dreams, you know. And, and it, for me, it's not right, you know. But all, all I can say is people need to be trusted. Managers need to be given a lot longer. And you need be given time to build and build an environment where you're free to to shine, you know? And, and I went to Man City last week, Sam. It's the yeah, weirdest yeah. thing. I got yeah. there quarter to 10 in the morning. I wasn't supposed to be there, at, but I can't stand being late. I got me accreditation, which let me in the ground. And there was nobody stopping me. So I wandered here and I wandered there and there was people. Was you working for somebody? Yeah, for yeah. Man City Man TV C later All on right, in, okay. in the afternoon because yeah. yeah. of, of the Palace connection. But yeah. Everybody was so friendly to start with, and I've never seen such a well-built, wonderful, grand, wonderful great place. Yeah, but the yeah. people who worked there yeah. made me feel like I had a smile on my face because it was wonderful how friendly they were, how welcoming they yeah. were, and no wonder that ground was full. It was buzzing, um, and I think we miss out on that experience because we go on a bus yeah. with our team. Yeah. We get abuse thrown at us. Yeah. If we win, it's great. And if we don't, we got to go again, you yeah. know, but we don't really see that entertainment no. value. The no. restaurants in there. Oh, right? unbelievable. Yeah. It was unbelievable. The tunnel, the tunnel something else. Club, oh. yeah, the tunnel yeah, club. the tunnel club. I found a secret there. about that, but I better not say it on it. Oh, okay, tell us later. I will. <laughs> I'll You're, be interested in you, that. You are being seen by uh, the people in the restaurant just as you come out. Yeah. Your team is, so I'll yeah. be careful. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, well, we're glad that you had a nice time. It was um, marvellous. Any players that you were like, who were the ones that you were like, oh, gosh, it's Christmas time, I'm going to have to rein them in, or I'm going to have to keep a special had, eye on them? I had down there as Doof. Obviously. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> old Doof was a big party animal like him. Was that so. not just all year round, though, Sam? Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, but he, he could, you know, he could send you on the edge or send you over the edge I mean <laughs> the only thing the only thing about Jufy is performances always outweighed his devilment yeah like likeable rogue Jufy um yeah. but you know some people couldn't couldn't put up with him some of my staff like but as a manager you 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 look at him and you manage him like you mean so you know old, old Jufy likes a night out sometimes and uh and he he's he just the way he lived his life He's carefree, yeah. free and easy, you know. So, but on the field, wow, you know, what a contribution he made. Mm -hmm. And not only did he make a contribution at Bolton when we got for Liverpool, he, he got us out of trouble at Blackburn. I bought, I bought him down on loan from uh, from Sunderland, got him off Roy, who couldn't couldn't cope with him, or, or Nicky, Ricky Spadger couldn't cope with him after Roy left. So I took him and um, he, he stayed, helped us stay up, and we took him on after that, like I mean, so... Twice I got in for a bargain because, mm. like Liverpool, paid twelve million. I think I paid three, and I think Sunderland played three and a half, and I got in for a million. So, good business, and that business makes your team better, fits into your budget, mm. and uh, you become a better manager because yeah. you've got a better team. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah, uh, Ian, who's your doofy? Um, well, I, I only had him for a very short period of time, and I have to say he didn't really cause me one day of trouble, which was Ricardo Fuller. I mean, oh, right. as a different type of fella. I was with Tony Pulis a few weeks ago who told some stories about he, he went to play a fictitious game for his country. And, yes, to get out. And he turned up on a Saturday morning of the most important game of, of Stoke's season, and he was a little bit abbreviated you know uh, he, he was staggering around basically so Kempy said to him you got to put him subtone and in the end they put him on and he won, <laughs> won him the game I never had that with him he was great with me and I was at Millwall so things went horrible for me but all, all I can remember I caught I caught two of my most senior players put in chips and lager on about half an hour after we've had a, a Friday night away night meal you know so we're playing away yeah we've had a the sit down team meeting we've had the food they should go off to bed fully full you know anyway turns out the chairman goes to me you better have a look at this what's going on someone's putting some extra chips and lager on the blooming bill what's going on you tell them thought you were in charge so anyway i 
had a word with the lady behind the reception. I said, if any of my players, could you just tell me what they're ordering, tell me which room it is while I'm having my food? So it happened. It was Brett Omarod and Keith Sovereign. So I said, can I come up with the person who's taking it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they knock on the door, they look through the little spy hole, and then I grab it. So gaffer, oh, oh, what's going on here? And it was Brett. And do you know what he said to me? I said, have you, he said, oh, gaffer, honestly, at home, I would have two pints on a Friday night, and I'd have a load of chips. And I'll he said, we, I said, how many times have you been doing this over recent weeks? And him and Keith Sovereign went, oh, every time, gaffer. I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll buy them. Don't put them on the club's bill. Yeah. Why are you asking the club to pay yeah, for it? Yeah. No problem. So anyway, we won the following day. Gives, Brett gives scored you, too. Gives you ear eight. You don't need that. So it's so keep oh, it off of me. Yeah. Don't let the chairman chew me backside off. But, <laughs> but it, I mean, it's fun. You wouldn't expect that, would you? Do you know what I mean? No, yeah, oh. no, you, you, you're right. I mean, in in the end, change is, change is a difficult thing, isn't it? Like, I mean, because from... People have t talked about me about like, how have you changed? How have you, why have you done that when you're the manager now? Like, you I mean, because you see what's coming, or I saw what's coming, and then so like, yeah, well, you go straight. You used to go straight in the bar, didn't you, and get a couple of pints after a game? Yeah, it's got then I just go straight out after. Might end up with a curry, like you I mean, you know. So might end up with a couple of pints on Sunday, coming Monday, put a bin liner on, sweat it off, like you I mean. And like when I came, manager stopped all the drink in the lounge. Stopped all the the pre match steaks and all that, like you mean, and ended up with all the carbs and the nutrition and stuff and all like that. You know, took ages. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you try and change the game how it is, and say, well, you wouldn't put up with that when you were playing. I said, yeah, that would have done. I said, if the manager told me that this will help you help you with your performance, then I would I would have done it. But nobody ever did. So you know, so <laughs> you know, so things come things come and go. Sam, I'm sorry, I, I just cannot get out of my head the vision of you in a bin bag right now. Oh, yeah. From like five minutes sweating ago. Out, just yeah, sitting yeah. in the bin bag, sweating, bite the, yeah. Bite the, bite the top off the, yeah. or bite the holes in the side, <laughs> put it on, then put it over, then run around and sweat. And what we didn't realise, it, it just made you sweat a lot just more. Just made you sweat a lot more. I mean, honestly, it's You can't. <laughs> Listen, well, that was our excuse. We could have an extra point. Yeah. Put a bin bag on. I put a bin yeah. bag on, yeah. So that was the, the past. Let's have a look, think about the future yeah. because 2024, we're already hoping for a Big Sam documentary, but <laughs> will there be 2024 a return to management, do you think? One, you, ne one, you? one never knows. Does, does, no. Whoever rings up and says, is, is, this, is there an opportunity for you? Uh, could there be an opportunity for you to come and manage the club? And I think I've said this before, you know, meeting up with owners, is the most important thing for me, and um, and all that. Or if the owners are f doesn't turn up much, or doesn't just comes and watches the game because he he's got other people to run the club now, which is most Premier League clubs. Then meet the people who are in charge of running the club, and and actually asking them what they're going to do for me, and then me to tell them what I think I can do for them based on that balance of probability, which is is the most important thing in the interview. Mm -hmm. So their support would I I encourage me to say this, what their lack of support might be, and they wouldn't know whether they're giving it or not giving it mm -hmm. by the questions I'd ask. And, and I would say thank you very much, but no thanks. Or yeah, let's give it a go. Yeah. But without your help, I ain't going to get anywhere. I think we're in a wonderful situation where we can pick and choose whether we yeah. do it again or not. That's and, true. Yes, and sometimes looking at it, I such a short time people are given these days it's almost well i'm not sure i would want to you know what i mean you you can't affect people if you're you haven't got the full influence that you need which is oh you know i i've seen the worst question asked by a sky news reporter last week he asked oh. <laughs> i'm not going to mention his name because it, it'd be unfair but how can you ask scott mctominay after they drawn it man c are you all behind the manager? Oh, yeah, at Liverpool. Liverpool. When they drew at Liverpool? No, when they drew at Man City. Oh, they did not. No, sorry, sorry. When they drew, <laughs> when they drew at Liverpool. Yeah, when they drew sorry. at Liverpool. Yeah, I'm getting a bit confused here. Yes. I couldn't believe it. I was shouting at the telly. I mean, really? Mrs. Gone, what's the matter? You can't ask that. That isn't, he's just been captain, yeah. right? For me, he should be captain mm. because he wears that badge with the pride that yeah. he doesn't yeah. blame anyone else. He tries. Well done, son. You know what that club's all about. Yeah. The other captain, for me, throws his arms in the air at yeah. the time. And there's a shock he wasn't playing when they all produced that 
much better performance, you know? Anyway, I, you cannot have that. That is undermining the manager. And well, that, but we're a media, you, you shouldn't do, you shouldn't undermine a manager by asking a question, should you? I don't think you should. Mm-hmm. I think that was terrible. Yeah. Great performance. Well done. You're captain. Brilliant. Not, and are the lads backing the manager? I mean, come on. Am I wrong or what? Is that no? That, you're not. No, you're not wrong. Terrible. But it's never. That's 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 unfortunate for what what we are as a as a nation now. Aren't we? We're a nation of what can we criticise, mm-hmm. or how can we find a the headline story? Mm. And the headline story can only be good news is no news, bad news is headlines. Yeah, and that, that's like right across the board now. That's where we get. Well, we, did we you get watch all the all the all the criticism that grows? on whether we win or whether we don't win. And it, and like you said, it happens quicker now than ever before. Mm. You know, you buy a centre forward for let's, an average price, a centre forward, 60 mil. You know I mean, like Man United centre forward, 72 million. Haven't scored yet. Mm. What a waste of money. <laughs> Next year, he might be a leading goal scorer for yeah. Man United. You've got to give him a year when they come from abroad, if they're young as well. But for me as a manager, I'm at Man United saying, I don't want him. I want somebody proven. If you want me to, if you want me to get Man United to where, where you want them to be, buy me Harry Kane. Please excuse me, I just want to stop this episode quickly because Big Sam and I just want to say a huge thank you to you for supporting No Tippy Tappy Football, whether you are listening or watching or doing both. Sam and I absolutely love doing this podcast and we couldn't do it without you. So take a second, please, and subscribe or follow wherever you are watching or listening to us. We're also on Twitter, No Tippy Tappy Football, and we have our own YouTube channel. I know everybody says it, but it really would mean a lot to us and it means that we can keep getting bigger and better guests the more followers and the more subscribers we have and then you can go and tell all your mates that you've done big sam a favor so thank you for listening great great news aston villa yeah brilliant news yeah. for for all the, of us the premier league yeah. across the world where have aston villa come from are they in the title race sam well you've got to say with christmas time you know what I mean, and 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 what we'll tell is between now and and January, and who he's going to buy. Okay, I think they'll go. for he, it. He has to. They I have to buy. I think they'll go for it. And I think, they need. The I think if they're going to want to stay there in the top four or go for the title, yeah. uh, another couple of players, and I'd say the same at the bottom. In my experience, if I was saving Burnley, Sheffield United, or Luton, I would be going to the board saying, "I've got these three players, even if they're only on loan in." Yeah. They're going to come in and make us better and give us a chance. So you're not going to you're not going to give them a five year contract. So if you get relegated, I do the job. I work within the budget, but I also don't put the club in financial jeopardy. Yeah. But if I'm at the top, I'm going to go. I want that one. That one. I don't need to. If I get him now, I don't need to buy him next season. Yeah. yeah. So push the boat out. A villa in the title race for you, Ian. Sorry. A villa in the title race. Well, it's who they, it's who they've beaten, and it's their record in the last calendar year. You know what Emery's done since wow. he's been at there. At home, especially, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. Yeah. You know, it's absolutely, honestly, it's it's astounding what he's done, and and they were they are ambitious. They really do, you know, and and it's refreshing, isn't it? it I is. really do think it's refreshing. Mm. I think Ollie Watkins is, has been absolutely. Oh, I love him. Two things, sensational. Brilliant. Two things, Ollie Watkins. Two most important people. Who's the most of the people? Or most important one after that? John McGinn. No. The goalie. Oh, the goalie. Oh, yeah. The Scott in me he, there immediately he, said John McGinn, by the way, no, clearly. Yeah, yes. but I mean, he is massively important because he's yeah. captain now yeah. and he's playing out of his skin and he's brilliant creating and scoring. But the goalie is pulling off some of the saves that he's pulling he off. He started a riot the other you know, day. He's, he, got, he, he, he's, he's got a character. Yeah. Look at, yeah. He has got you know, a but I, I mean, the defence look look at him and go, yeah. well, he'll save that one, like you mean. And he is doing that. So he's, he seems to have the bit between whatever he's done. Emery four marks to him because he failed first time here, mm. and uh, this time he's really, really showing what he's made of. Like I mean, because he used to do it with Seville, didn't he? I mean, mm. when, he, when he win you you Europa, Europa Cup three times with them, yeah. you know. So yeah. If Ollie Watkins stays in form for the whole season, like he currently is, and like he has been all season, then oh, 
I feel like they've got a chance. I mean, but it is tight up there in terms of Arsenal at the top of the table just now. Do you think Declan Rice is he the is he the oh, difference maker for them this year? In my opinion, absolutely. One of the biggest differences, one of the biggest biggest purchases that uh, that they've made. And uh, you know, I thought Man City were going to buy him when they bid. I thought they would have gone the whole way, um, but obviously they didn't. And I think he probably had his eye on Arsenal anyway. I don't know, but. Yeah, he's made a, he's made a difference in midfield. In his in his, I, I watched him when they beat us when I was at Leeds. I just went, said to Moisey after I went, "You you lucky <laughs> boy." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I it's like a bit, a bit like Jude well. Bellingham. What's happened to him? In it, oh, what a player he's become. Declan Rice is not had quite the impact. He has a massive impact on England. Yeah. And on and on West Ham and now on Arsenal. Yeah, yeah. I like Jesus as well. I think he's been yeah absolutely sensational. You know, but it's it's for me it's quite amazing. You know that he he's been under the the great man for a bit. Arteta knows how to press high. I think that's the secret to it. So does Klopp. So do, all the people who've won the Premier League don't let you have it at the back. No, they don't. You know, and and they're so good that. You can't do that back to them. We've got to learn how to do that if you want to beat them. And and Emery, I think he's been he's been very clever. He's been around the place. He knows what he's doing. So he knows how to win with with smaller budgets than the others. So it, it, it's making it much much more exciting. I know you, you know, you got the jumper on, but and and I was blown away with I you know for me Guardiola. I, I'm looking at it. I've seen some fantastic well, managers in my lifetime. Yeah. You know, and it, for me he's. You've got to put him up there now because he's won the treble um, as the greatest of all time. But you know, I was very lucky to to witness Fergie and and the fight that he had with Arsene Wenger. And you know, you got Mourinho coming in, smacking that up. You got Big Sam with clubs that shouldn't be there or, who were competing. It, it's just you got to find your own way. And and I just don't want everybody playing the same way. For me, that just kills me. That's why I love your podcast. <coughs> you know, you cannot. Pass it to your pack for me. Give it to your forwards. You know, give it to your forwards because they're better than you. You're def- not being funny. You know, the defenders. But you see some goalies now. They look like centre halves or or, or mm-hmm. midfield playmakers, don't they? Do you know what I mean? Well, it's incredible. I, I, I think the likes of um, Alan Shearer would be going absolutely potty about the way the game's played today. Yeah, give me the ball. Yeah. He wanted the ball. Give it to the as big much man. as he possibly could. Mm. Not in not in the air, he was okay, but very, very good, particularly on crosses. Like, but he wanted to, he wanted to be involved so much in the open mm. play as well as getting in the box. Like, I mean, and centre forwards today it's, tend to wander around until they can make a, one run or get in the box and score a goal. Like, I mean, so this weekend there's a big game in the Premier League top and first place and second place play each other, which is currently Arsenal and Liverpool. Mm. Who do you think um, has the better chance of winning the Premier League this season, Arsenal or Liverpool? Well, bo- bo- both, uh, I mean, both are just a little short on firepower in goals term to creativity. I felt that Manchester United did a great job blocking off Liverpool. But there were still lots of lots of opportunities for Liverpool to score that they didn't take. I think there's sort of near 30 attempts at goal. Mm. And only eight on target. That's a big red flag for Jurgen. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I think that so they haven't got the understanding. They, that, they've yeah, not, they? and, and people are saying that, uh, that maybe Arsenal might be just still. But I think Arsenal share their goals out really well mm. across the the front line and and in midfield. Yeah, they, I mean, for me, you know, that Havertz is a really talented player. Very still young, still good. Um, They've got a decent blend and a decent and Ketia is is getting there. Yeah. So you know, Jesus, um, Jesus, um, Saka. Martinelli, Saka. Yeah. You know, they're, they're getting there. But are, are they have one or two injuries and they might fall away in other positions? You know, and and you know, I've listened to this and Arsenal fans. I think they're going to go for it in in the window again. Kevin De Bruyne back training, by the way, pitches yesterday. I'll be on the training pitch. Yeah, he'll be. I think he'll be biting at the bit to get back. Like I mean, I have to say, Man City's recent lot. You know, Aguero for me was just wonderful to watch. Absolutely, like a goal scorer. I love a goal scorer, but I I actually bumped into him once. I was over 
Atletico Madrid having a look round and he was in a cafe, he didn't know me, I, and I saw him and my wife was with me. How he behaved with the supporters was just top drawer. What a we wonderful all time player. What a wonderful man. You could see it, Sam. And then he didn't he'd been injured, so he went on the the he didn't play for his national team. So he played in a, a practice match and boy did he try. Never seen anything like it. Honestly, yeah. what an attitude the fella had. I know it's neither of you committed there to Liverpool or Arsenal, by the way. No, I don't think we should. Discussions without well, we haven't mentioned Newcastle. What are they no, going to do? I don't but think I'm not thinking should. they're off think it this year. I, I don't think we can honestly tell you. It's that close. It's that tight. We And how these bookmakers do it, they, yeah. they predict, uh, I don't want to do that. You know, for me, what we'll give you is how we see it. And we see it really close. And normally it's about the window, who adds something, Who's got the strongest will, not just skill? It's about that. And if you look at the week, Mohamed Ali, Mohamed Ali, <laughs> if, if he's done look, a Mohamed Ali saying there. If you the look will at, must be stronger than the skill. That's my whole okay. point. And if yeah. you look at Roy Keane's reaction to the interviews that um, he, he witnessed, he was fuming, absolutely fuming, with the big centre half. Oh yes, Vir Virgil. Yeah, Virgil van Dijk. Van Dijk. I, yeah. I didn't think he meant, but Roy was fuming. Oh, he said he was arrogant or something, didn't he? he said, yeah, because what, what he was trying to say, there was only one team trying to win it. You know, the, he went, my team come here and we were struggling a bit. You know, how dare you? You've only won one title. What you? And, and Roy meant it. Do you know what I mean? Roy what, what's wrong with Man U is that. that they you got no one like him who cares like that. And where's that gone in football? Do you know what I mean? I'm looking at Man City. They do. Rodri cares that you could see it. Jack was gutted that they let that in. You know, they didn't want to blame anybody, but there is when you're used to winning, that's what it's about. And you've got to remember that. So I don't want to, when we say something, sometimes it hurts the other fans. So I'm not just sat on a fence. This is gospel. I am so delighted it's so close. So delighted it's so tight. And really, for the first time in a long time, a lot of people might have half a chance, you know. And for me, listen to your manager. Let him tell you if he's brave enough what he needs in the window and try and get him in. Do you know what I mean? Try and get him in. Love it. The bravest thing I've ever seen any manager say was Mourinho. He, he signed about five players and he went, oh, thank you very much to the board. They've got me 75% of the players I wanted. <laughs> That's all Jose for you. How about that? It's hey, brilliant. I'd have been well happy with 75% of the players I wanted. <laughs> and Cluffy, you, Cluffy boys a centre forward for over a million quid and goes, you know what? He's rubbish. rubbish yeah. And at the time I thought, yeah. What you bought him? Yeah. Does that make you rubbish? Wow. Well, it's amazing, isn't it? Amazing. Genius, isn't it? Now we always ask for listener questions on the pod, so thank you as always. You can send me a tweet if you'd like to ask our guests Big Sam a question anytime. Uh, and this one is come from Will and he says, Is is Jared Bowen the closest player to Mo Salah in terms of positioning and style? He's five years younger. Should Liverpool be looking at someone like him soon? I think so. I think he's earned his 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 place for people to look at him in terms of that because he's 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 been up there. He's got in the England squad. He's got left out. He's had a quiet time, but now he's come back again. Like I mean, and he's and it's not just what he's got as a player. It's what he's got in terms of his goals, a bit the goal ability. He he wanders into positions off the wide, into positions of goal scoring on a regular basis, and finishes well. So you know, I, I under underestimated. I would say by the whole of football in the in the Premier League, they underestimate how good he is. Well, perhaps one big club doesn't, and maybe make a make a move for him. But you know, certainly, certainly his intelligence and the where and the position he's getting, the opportunities and the and the amount of success he's getting in front of goal again, worthy of a and of course. Guaranteed Premier League success. He doesn't have to come from abroad and settle in. Yeah, he's already. You he can go and do it. Would like, be a mean? great shout, to be honest. I mean? And I got one. I would go for Wilfred Zaha if I was somebody at the top of this division. Is he Galatasaray? He's at Galatasaray, but I would, if I was one of the big ones, if I was Arsenal, maybe I'd, I'd try and. Well, have I'd, him. Have, I'd have got, I'd have got him up. Well, I've worked with him, obviously, so. Yeah. I'd have got him on a free all day long. Yeah, all day long. It, what, did he? I, I get the feeling he wanted Champions League football. Wanted the chance well, to I'd have given him Champions League football at Man United. and mm. you know, Or Liverpool. Yeah. I think he needed Fergie, with the greatest respect to well, David he Moyes. Fergie, he? He Moyes he took over yeah, and he, got... he couldn't really play him. No. You know, he needed to Too win. Too young then he was. 
So you both fans of Jared Bowen at West Ham. Really? What about um, Kudus? So £40 million he's cost them. Obviously got the two goals at the weekend. He's looking like an absolute bargain. £40 million from Ajax. Anthony was £90 million from Ajax or something like that to United. Do you think United chose the wrong winger? <sighs> Attitude for me is very, very questionable, honestly. And And if I'm going back to... Sir Alex, he never, ever got anyone's character wrong. And if if any one of them ever thought they were bigger and better than the club and started moaning, he would sort that out. He, you know, so that's where Man United had gone wrong, in my opinion. And that started with Mourinho signing Pogba. Sir Alex got rid of him because he thought he was bigger than the club and then Mourinho brings him back. So, And if you look at it, attitude, attitude, attitude. There are players used to have the best attitude to want to win. And now... As Roy Keane said the other day, hang on a minute, you know, because he, he saw the team try really hard without Bruno Fernandes. Fernandes was given a new contract and given a new, when they weren't doing very well. And I'm sorry, that's not a leader for me. He is not a leader. He blames everybody else. That's not a leader. What you do is you're out there and you do it like Roy Keane used to, you know, but there ain't many of them around, is there? Man United's buying of players, Sancho. What will they get for Sancho now? But You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's it's. What would they get for Anthony if they put him on the market? What would they, what would they get? And they, that's why, that's why you are, and that's what happened at Everton. Mm. Because when when I got the 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 two hundred and fifty million they spent, would be probably lucky to get, I don't know, eighty hundred million back. Mm. So that becomes a big problem for you if you're the next man in. Yes, yeah, right. because you, your budget's going to shrink. It's not going to start improving. You must always contribute to your own budget by what what players you can sell yourself. You can't always ask the owners just to keep putting it in, you know, and that's where Man United uh, have really slipped up because they've had some of the best managers in the world. Yeah, but the th- the thing is for me, when Ten Hag came in, they lost really poorly in one game and he had them in on the Sunday yeah. and he made them do the running that the other opposition did against them. They, yeah. out- they outrun them by about six kilometers mm. per person so he added it all up there you go do that on sunday just quite simply went they outran you no one would do that to roy, King, roy king's team do you know what i mean it was all about us winning wasn't it and it was all about working hard as well as being good you know and and you know the the weird thing was probably a player that someone couldn't handle at leeds in cantona came yeah, and yeah. changed right. them made Not them winners still sing his name now i know but look what that did for David Beckham and, and those people because he came in and he worked. And this is what the young people need to understand. Santos, he needs to understand that, hang on, son, you ain't doing it. So don't have a go at your manager. You're not well, doing it. Do you I, know what I mean? You ain't doing, you ain't even working hard. You're moaning, you're whinging, shut up and go and earn your money by getting better. He was had too much too soon. And do you know what? I, I wouldn't listen to him. I would make him run like you wouldn't believe. You call me old fashioned. I'm sorry, son, but you, your promise, what you've promised the world, you ain't doing it. Whose fault's that? Mine or yours? But I say that comes down to your own, uh, the, the, your own recruitment side of it. It's, it's not just the talent of the player. Yeah. It's his, it's his, it's him as a person character, now. Yeah. And why would Man City get rid of him if he was a great character? Exactly. Why would they sell him? They wouldn't. Yeah. And why would Man United buy back Pogba Pogba, Pogba, when he had a bad attitude? Yeah. Yeah. So, and they're worried about bad attitudes. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense, does it? You, you are in control. And what you should find out is the character of someone, right? Your players are built by characters. And you, what are you like when you don't get what you want? Do you sulk? Do you moan? Or do you just work harder? Now, you mentioned a bit earlier, Sam, about, um, sackings over Christmas. Yeah. And I wanted to kind of ask from both your personal point of views, um, what is it like when you know you're under pressure, when people are, I mean, have you been in the position where people are talking about who's going to get your job when you're still in the job? I have. Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Harry Redknapp was getting it. Yeah. So. How is that? Well, you, you, know, through your, you know through your own contacts, like, I mean, if you're, if you're good at your job, and you 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 find out what's happening, and you find that obviously you, the uh, I wasn't the owner's choice. Mike Mike, I wasn't my choice. Freddie Shepherd signed me on, and um, obviously Mike, Mike was learning about the way football, the way football should be run. 
because he's a new owner for the first time, like you mean. And so I, I don't have any, I don't have any problems with the the, the the sacking. That was what they chose to try and bring their own man in. But the the bigger rumours were that Arid Arid was going to come, and and I thought that it's too far for Harry. <laughs> come all the way, come all the way from from Sandbanks to Newcastle. Like I mean, how's he ever going to get home? Like I mean, so well, Sir Les uh, told us he got he used to get a helicopter, didn't he? Yeah, so maybe yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah well, Les flew his helicopter into our <laughs> training ground. But I think that uh, it, I think that once once you know it's coming, you got you got to fight for your results, and all your results can keep you in the job. But then you're thinking. Soon as the next defeat comes, it's going to come again. Yeah, I had it at Palace. I, you know what I mean? Know any, they they weren't choosing anyone else, but my relationship with Steve had fallen down quite really? quite horribly on on a shake of a hand rather than it written in a contract. I shook a hand thinking that he would be he would give me what he said he would because I signed from Blackpool and I said if I keep you up, can we change that? Oh yeah, should have had it in writing, son. It should have. Done. Yeah, I should have done. It was my fault. You, but you're I, a man of your experience. That's my, my old point, Sam. That's mm. my old point. But mm. I wanted it my way. And he said, no, I'm not. why would I do that now? So I couldn't work for him anymore. And he realised that. So it ended how it ended. I was gutted. Only I didn't have that problem with him, you know. So I had, a, I had a, a particularly good time. But I think I was a bit lucky on the base that there was two other co-sharers in the two American lads. Mm. Who funded 30, 35 million quid in January to to wow. keep Palace up? Yeah. Like I mean, and we bought all of us together, not just me. We bought the right players. Yeah, we bought four players that made a huge, huge difference, difference yeah. to Palace staying in the league that year. In fact, some of the finest games we won at Liverpool, two one. Ben Teke scored two after him after Liverpool casting him to one side. We won. We won at the league champions. We won at Chelsea away, two mm. one. We beat Arsenal at home three nil. Did you ever know of a player that you got that you hadn't even mentioned? Oh, always. Has that ever happened to you? Always. Oh, oh, loads, loads. Well, I had one. Yeah. I couldn't stand it because I didn't want that player. And I went away thinking that this player is coming, Nicholas Bentner. Yeah. And I come in, and someone else was there, and I went, "What are you doing?" And it was well, the, I always got told. Oh, that, I always got told they were coming. Didn't no, I never got. I, no, I didn't even know. I didn't know. Well, what club was that? Naughty. And when Palace. you were at Palace? Yeah. So I went mental. Typical me. I should have just shut up. But I went. I told the player. <laughs> told the agent. Why didn't you tell me? Told the chairman. Why didn't you tell me? Are you being respectful by not saying the player's name? Yeah, a little bit. You know, well, what, what I'm trying to say. It's in my book. I've I've mentioned it, but I can't. How can I work with someone if? I don't know where I stand with him. Don't make sense. I'll go back right now. We were talking about him earlier on. Nottingham Forest manager, Steve mm. Cooper. Yeah. When he was given the job after what he did at uh, Swansea, yeah. I said, he hasn't proved anything yet. No. Nope. Right? I I was upset that they got rid of my mate, uh, Chris Hutton. I yeah. thought he's always so done I a good job well. everywhere he's done. Yeah. And the fellow went in, done an absolutely magnificent job. Yeah, Not only did he get him up, yeah. He kept him up. So the lack of respect that man is getting right now is embarrassingly what's wrong with football, in my opinion. So we're not going to do quick fire questions. Well, we are, but we're going to do a, a Christmas quiz. never been a quick fire Scotland. question answered Never, yet. Not never. Me, no. So um, as opposed to just quick fire questions, like random things that we want to know from you, we're going to do a half season review. Half season so review. So fairly know. quick answers for these different topics. So first of all, player of the season so far. What, in the Prem? Yes. I went for John McGinn. Are you going for John McGinn? And Villa, because yes. he's captain now. Mm. And Villa are right where I didn't, didn't expect him expect him to be. So, you know, just somebody that everybody's watching this wouldn't expect me to say it, but I am saying it because yeah. I love it when – because they are a bit, of a bit of an underdog the way they started this year, but they are playing – a magnificent game and upsetting a, a, the big boys at the moment and long mate it's always great for the Premier League when somebody comes along like that you know and it's I mean? great for Scotland to have great John Scotland, McGinn yeah. flying high That's coming up true. to the Euros very true yes I have a new favourite okay go on I saw him play last week in a position that I didn't think for one minute he could do was his um, 
Rico Lewis. Oh. Uh, I, 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 I had him in my mind, seen him going up and down on the left, got in the England team on the left, left back, attacking left back. I didn't know he had the maturity to step inside and look as good in that sitting midfield role. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Wasn't sitting, really. You know, to be honest, he, he, he did both sides of it like we used to have to years ago. Yeah. Midfield. So I, I cannot believe what I actually saw. And they only drew, but he was, I thought he was absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah, very good. From so, accounts of it, all of the academy people that I've spoken to say he's one of the most intelligent footballers they've ever worked with. Honestly. One of my all-time favourites, Silva, is Bernardo or oh, yeah, or yeah, David, yeah. whichever David, you yeah. like. I mean, yeah, yeah. totally spoiled. But I, I have to big up that young lad. I know it's a, a, a you know, not not an underdog, but that kid for his age, wow, we better watch him. He is something else. Brilliant. Amazing. Well done, young man. I well thoroughly done. enjoyed watching you play. Yes. And he'll keep playing if he plays like that. One of oh, yes, he's, definitely. He's, well worth his place in the team. Like. I wouldn't Man. know where to pick him, mate. I wouldn't know where to play him. We Where's never his... know where he's going to play, yeah. Midfield, somewhere in defence. He was high up the pitch at points as well. Yeah. Um, manager of the season so far? <sighs> Emery. We're having a right Aston Villa love him today. It's not. He's, he's earned it. And the, year that, it, the yeah. year that they've had is the best year they've ever had in the Premier League. Yeah, with the the oh the calendar year, yeah, 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 in the calendar year. So you know, I mean, obviously, obviously, Pep's having a little spell off at the moment. Probably will come back. Arteta's done great again Fantastic. to carry on from. He must, they, Klopp, he must still be gutted. Them. He didn't win the league last year. He they must got, be yeah. still playing, praying on his yeah. mind, saying, I, "I can't let that happen again." Yeah, and uh, so, but and he's, what about Sean Dyche? Sean's done absolutely magnificent under the circumstances. And, and they, if they were, if they hadn't had the 10 point deducted, that'd be the top six nearly. Yeah. They'd be heading towards the top six, like with the points they picked up recently. So, but you see, there, there is a pragmatic manager who has managed to convince the Everton fans more than anybody that they need to play like this to get the results that they need. Mm. And when they start winning, the fans, the fans will accept it because he's getting the best out of. The people he has available, mm-hmm. and the and the type of football they're playing is productive and winning, and they started to score goals as well. And something we talked about before we came in here: how important the set pieces, mm. vital, vital. And, I, I never realised it. Even the, watching the Beckham thing the other day, yeah. Man United won the treble because of his two corners. Right corners, on, yeah. At the end of the in day. the last two minutes, and yeah. you said over there before we started this was. You realised that you had to win the ball back a bit more, not give so many goals away, win it back a little. And yeah. then also you worked on scoring set a few move. more. Yeah. Not from open play, because you didn't think your team could. Could. Yeah. From set plays. Yeah. And you spent so much time on that that it, it and not being funny, Tony Pulis, look at the long throws he used to do oh, because yeah. he knew he had that. That's a it's a weapon. It's a weapon in your armory. Yeah. So you've got to make the best of it, haven't you? So are you going for Udai, Sean? Um I'm going. I'm going to say Sean. Sure, I think. Yeah, good. Wow. I, 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 and I am because that's not an easy club to manage. No, the it's expectation not. Expectation no. of it. No, it's not. Way it well, is. Well, I think. And when are. I see what he's spent and what he's had to do, I think he's done a brilliant job with people oh, who he's brought in absolutely. and people who are already there. You know, it's what a, a bit, wonderful fellow. At the moment, with the speculation on the takeover and the financial irregularities, it's a very, very. Difficult job, and he's not just management of the players, but management overall of the position of the club has been excellent with his experience he's gained over the years. He's managed to accept all that pressure, yeah, and take it away it, from the keep players, keep it away from the players, and got the players to, yeah, to uh, to perform. Okay, next siege one. mentality he's formed there, definitely, yes, brilliant. Next one, the underwhelming team of the season so far, it's only one for me. Spent, they got it so wrong, it's unbelievable. Since the last window, Chelsea, Chelsea, all day long. What are you doing? Honestly, it might have got a bit better, they might be all right in the future, but that is how not to do it, in my opinion. Terrible, I agree 100%. Went, went from yeah. being a top four club uh, to, to what? The I have worst no thing, idea. The worst thing is that the, the coach is always going to be blamed, yeah, exactly. he's not getting the best. I'm, I'm talking we spent about, all this money yeah. on these players, <laughs> and this coach is not getting the best out of them. 
then that coach won't get the best out of them, and then the next coach won't get the best out of them. Do you, if, you know what I'm going to like it They haven't bought a team. They haven't bought a team. No. They bought I'm, a lot of individuals, but not a team. Yeah. I, with players they didn't even need, yeah. right? So how much are the, the manager added? I, I'm going to go, the amazing bit that I like this year is, is Rec, Wrexham, right? They didn't get promoted the first year. They didn't change anything. They they were disappointed. Grimsby got up instead of them. They stuck with it, stuck with the manager, stuck with it, stuck with it. They gone and got promoted. Now they might get promoted again. Well done. Because they, they those two superstars must oh. want success, but they're, they understand people. What is the fella at Chelsea doing? Um, we asked Neil Warnock this question, this point last year. Well, mate. And yes, and everybody went nuts for the answer. This is the stuff that people really want to know, Ian. Right. Um, and Sam, I don't know if you remember, but we're going to get yours again. Tell us what your Christmas Day dinner plate <laughs> looks like. <laughs> well, it's quite a big one to start with. <laughs> <laughs> I do let myself go. I can eat. When does it start with a mince pie then, Ian? Because you told well, me that you're loving the yeah. mince pies. Then. <laughs> mince pie will be on the way home. Oh, okay. A cup of coffee and a mince pie. I can't help it. I'll probably yeah. buy my wife one and take that for her. I, honestly, I never used to like the mince. I From Greg's? Always, oh, on the way back. No, no, cost. Costa. Oh, oh, right. Not there's other brands, but okay. Costa's yeah. mince pies. We can say, we can say <laughs> we're not we're on telly now. No, no, no. Right. Costa's <laughs> mince pies for us don't have it warm. It's got to be cold and you bite into it and it's just crispy. It's Ooh, just amazing. I ate mince pies, Ian. Ooh. Don't you like oh, them? Oh, no. Mince pies. Gross, yeah. Nah, oh. what is the matter with you? Sorry, Ian. I I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't, if you said Brussels sprouts, I could understand it. <laughs> Not mince pies. Yeah, no, but I will have a little bit of everything. Okay. Right? I used to be fussy, but I will have sprouts. Okay. And the sprouts will be with little bits of bacon and a bit of garlic yes, on. That's yes, nice, yeah. I will have some... My sister normally does about 11 veg, different veg <laughs> for everybody. She's a bit of a feeder, my lovely sister. Sue. Good. And I, I will have a little bit of all of it. You're yeah, talking yeah. a bit of Swede. You're talking cauliflower cheese, which is lovely. And then pigs in blankets, got to have that. Oh, yes. How many? Probably three if I could get away with it. Okay. If I'm not being too greedy. But I will go back for seconds because it's a sort of buffet style and you oh, can help right, yourself. Yeah. But my favourite bit is after. We always warm it up with a, a sound later on, you know. We stay oh, over, and honestly, it's the leftover sort oh, yeah. of thing I love, yeah. Yeah. you know. But I'm delighted. Turkey bun with a bit of gravy to dip in. Oh, yeah, that, you know happy I mean? days! There yeah. we go, Sam. Yeah, I'm not, and then I put a bit of red sauce on it. I can't help it. Yeah, right. what? what on me? Put on red me spuds. sauce on gravy. On me spuds what? in the gravy. Yeah, can't help what? it. I know it sounds horrible, but I used to put cheese and onion crisp with red sauce on. Beat that then. Happy no, days. I anyway, let's get. <laughs> and then with a massive helping of Christmas pud. Ooh, white sauce or custard? Uh, I have cream on mine. Oh, cream, right. Runny cream, yeah. Right, okay, nice. I hate Christmas puddings as well. What's the matter yeah, with you? Yo, it's it's that mint, that's, yeah, they're very yeah, it's that kind very of. Yeah, there. yeah. Right, well, that was, a, that was better than Neil's answer, I'm going to say. Why? Because it was... What did he have? I Nothing. can't remember, but it was Carrots. detailed and I enjoyed it and you put ketchup on it. And... I, got, I got everything yes. going on. Yes. You know? We we'll need to, to compare the, them. I got to have the... It's all on there. It sounds horrible, but you've got to have the, the lovely <laughs> the red sauce. plate, though. That's, you've That's got to massive. get the biggest plate out, haven't you? My sister you is a feeder, a right? Plate, but so. when I played football, I would sometimes... We'd go out after with her husband, Phil, and my wife, Kim, and I'd have one meal and then I'd have another one as well. Oh, wow. Because I could eat. I, I mind you, I probably ran about fourteen k in the game. Yeah. I wasn't very good. I just ran around. You know what I mean? So, but my sister couldn't believe I could eat two meals. So she feeds me up and go on. And the great thing about it, you can keep going back for more. Yeah. Beautiful. Right, give us yours. Nothing Sam. like being stuffed on Christmas. Oh, it's day, wonderful, isn't it? Uh, that's mine. Unless you're the turkey. Well, we're, yes. Well, we're going. We're going out. <laughs> we're like going it. out. We're going out as a family to a, a restaurant. Only a small restaurant, like you mean. We got two and a half hours before the next lot came in, like you mean. So we pre-ordered. So I'm vegetable soup. Nice. Uh, veg soup. Yeah, vegetable soup. And then it's full turkey. Mm -hmm. The full turkey's got stuff in, um, pigs in blankets, oh. Yorkshire pudding. Oh, controversial, yeah, but I like that. it. You know, yeah. Sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage. I think there's, there's, 
Um, no, there's uh, parsnips. Oh, I love oh, a parsnip. Yeah. Yeah. Honey, honey glazed parsnips. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then, I'm getting hungry. And then <laughs> I, I've only asked for roast potatoes, no boiled potatoes, just roast potatoes. Yeah. Agreed. Yep. Turkey, cranberry sauce. And then, of course, it's the... I'm the only, only, only person in the house that eats a Christmas pudding. Nobody else likes it like you mean. So oh, I get loads of them. Christmas pudding with uh, brandy it. sauce. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and uh, obviously... When we're out, it'll be um, white wine with the with the meal. Uh, at the end, will be a mince pie with a coffee latte oh. and a large brandy. Oh, you've got, oh, it. Oh, oh. got it! No all cigar? No, not now. No, not allowed. Okay. <laughs> not anymore. Thank you, thank you very much. Love those answers. Oh, no alcohol for me this year. Okay. I haven't drunk for eight months. Wow, brilliant! Yeah. Do you feel good? I feel absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. very yeah. good. It's good for me. It don't suit everybody, but yeah, not for me. I have a zero Guinness, mate. I don't know if anyone's ever. I know. have tried. What have zero Guinness, Guinness done a zero? Yeah, yeah. A zero. It's it's just yeah, yeah. don't give you a headache. Uh, yeah. mate, it's unbelievable. You would not. Does know it the... taste like Guinness? Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, wouldn't yeah. know I mean, it. Yeah, it's incredible. I'm not a drinker, so I'm with you. Yeah, I like a um, a zero beer as well. So, mm. if I if I'm being brutally honest, it's a bit of a girl's drink, but. Um, Zero gin's good as well. See, I've not tried a zero gin. They're good. The only thing I do drink alcohol-wise, I love a mulled wine. Do you? Give me a jug of mulled yeah, wine any be day. My oh, first yeah. Christmas without a drink. Depends who makes it, the mulled wine. Ooh. Get a proper brew of brown sugar, cinnamon sticks. Yes, that's what I want. A good quality red wine, by the way, adds okay. to the mulled wine. A cheap mm. bottle doesn't. Oh, I like a cheap bottle of mulled wine that you yeah. get pre-mixed, Sam. You're a bit above oh, us. Yes, he's, yes. You're, he's you're in that, easily like, pleased then. He's in that really expensive bottle of wine club, aren't you? You and <laughs> Him Sir and Alex, Sir Alex, yeah. yeah. I could never taste the difference, to be honest. Could you not? No. Oh, okay. When they talk about all oh, the flavour and that, I can't get no. that. That's just... You can't taste the licorice Honestly, then. Or it's the oak. Like, the or emperor's the, yeah. new clothes. Or I'd have said, Oi, mate, you're dark it's berries, hanging out. Dark you're, berries, yeah. You got nothing on, kid. Tell him the truth. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Honestly, I'd have been the one shouting it. Oi, you're <laughs> absolutely starkers. <laughs> Are you in your clothes? <laughs> <laughs> Good God, the king's got a few lumps and bumps on him. I don't mean our king. Because we got a king now, not a queen, don't we? Uh, <laughs> oh, Is it 100 today or 100 yesterday? Oh, really? Oh, bless her. I've just finished watching The Crown. Okay, this has got off in a right weird yeah, direction. Got, yes. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you thank for you. watching. Ian, thank you for coming. Se you're only our second guest that we've had on two twice. Two twice, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, you're obviously scraping the barrel, aren't yes. you? And Carl, is? Carl's his friend, so we had Carl Robinson back, and then you're the, the second one we've invited back. So thank, thank you thank very you. much. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks Always been a pleasure, present. Ian. Thank you Big very much. Sam, thank you. And have a great Christmas and, uh, and a good New Year, pal. Thank, thank you, Sam. Everybody. Have a wonderful and Christmas. There were, and there were listeners. Yes. Viewers, have a very merry Christmas happy, and a happy healthy New Year. New Year to Thank all. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And we'll see you in 2024. We'll be back early in January. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe, listen, do all of that reviewing. Sam and I will be very grateful. It's the only Christmas gift we ask from you. Have a wonderful time.